Righto, uh, this is just a, a little bit extra because uh, a number of people asked me about uh, making a grapple. Um, uh, and so I just thought I would ha have a just a, a short piece to uh, g give you some advice. Um, uh, why is that not moving? Here we go. Uh, one of the problems for aquatic plants uh, is the uh, uh, water barrier, which makes it a, a, a bit more difficult to uh, see what's going on. Uh, so, for example, uh, this, this lake here, which I happen to know, uh, doesn't have very much in the way of vegetation in it. Uh, if you actually took away the water, it would probably look something a bit like this. And actually, when you think about it, it's quite scary to think that there are probably right throughout this lake, there's just no underwater vegetation. If it was ab above, above the water, um, th then people would probably take a lot more notice of it. But uh, really, the only way of, for aquatic plants is to actually get down in there. Uh, and for that, you need to have a few extra tools to. Uh, to see what's going on. Um, so the most common uh, piece of equipment that, it, uh, that people use if they're looking for aquatic plants is the grapnel, which allows you to, you can throw it out into the, the middle of the water uh, and haul in uh, some of the vegetation that's growing out there without having to wade in and um, uh, even with a, uh, do some snorkeling. Um, so as part of this, I actually had a look online to see what was available. Um, and this, uh, this is one that I've uh, come across a number of people using uh, and uh, rather shocked to see that it, uh, it was being on sale for 50 pounds, at least uh, in, in one of the sites that I was looking at. Um, I've actually had a chance to use this, uh, this design, uh, this type of grapnel, and actually I wasn't terribly impressed. Uh, it's, it, these, these prongs um, are, are really quite stiff. They do bend a bit, um, but they, it's, you can only bend them backwards and forwards a rather limited number of times before they start breaking. Um, so uh, I've, I've got a, a couple of these, I think, uh, with uh, only two prongs and much less effective, uh, well, actually virtually ineffective, because you need to have a, a, a sort of range of prongs to, uh, at different angles to make sure that something is, is dragging along the bottom. Um, uh, uh, some other ones that uh, you can get more, even more elaborate ones. Uh, this one I th uh, saw was on sale for seventy pounds, uh, and this one a staggering one hundred and twenty pounds. Um, but you can get something a bit cheaper uh, if you if you look at a boating site or uh, fishing sites. Uh, you could get something that that would be effective as a grapnel for about. Uh, 20 pounds or so. Um, uh, and actually uh, the, the one that I thought most promising when I was looking uh, was this, this little one. It's quite, it looks quite a robust one. And that was, that was on sale for 10 pounds, which seemed a, quite a reasonable, uh, reasonable one. Um, uh, but on the whole, I was rather unimpressed with the, uh, with the prices particularly. Uh, of what you could get online. But there are also other problems with these, uh, particularly you know, sort of the things that are designed for anchors, they're bulky um, uh, and heavy, and so not gonna uh, sort of weigh down your rucksack quite considerably. Uh, they're also, a lot of them are quite stiff, uh, or uh, unbending uh, prongs. Uh, so they're gonna get snagged on boulders and things. Uh, and you, you, you might find that you spent 50 pounds and then find that throw it out the first time and you can't get it back in again. Um, 
Uh, I also tend to think that the, the round curve prongs are, are less good at gathering things together. If they're, if they're pulled together into a, into a sort of more V shape, um, it, it tends to uh, gather together the weed a bit, a, a bit better. So what I'm uh, proposing to do is just to go through uh, three very cheap uh, uh, ways of, of, of making grapnels uh, of, of various different uh, sizes. Um, uh, this is, uh, the, so we'll start with the egg whisk design. Um, uh, I bought uh, these three egg whisks for a pound in the local hardware store. Uh, so we're talking quite a lot cheaper. Um, and uh, it's very simple. You could you have a choice of different uh, different different ones, but uh, I I went for the, the smaller one here because uh, uh, and uh, basically what you do is you cut uh, the alter alternate uh, strands of, of here so that you've got one end attached uh, and one end loose. Um, and uh, this spacer disc is also quite a useful thing for, for sort of keeping the, the prongs in position. Um, and uh, uh, I, some, some, some egg whisk may be sort of better attached, but these ones, the, the prongs are quite loose. So I had to bend round uh, the ends of the prongs to, to sort of stop them slipping out of, of the uh, of this handle bit. Um, and um, there's a few other things you can do. Uh, so uh, you can sort of put some tape for, because one of the main things is that the prongs can swivel around. So uh, a bit of uh, insulation tape will just hold them in position. Uh, this is quite a light grapnel, so uh, it, that is a problem if you've got lots of vegetation that it, it might just sort of land on the top and not sink into it. So, but you so you can add a bit of weight by just adding uh, adding a few washes in, um, uh, as many as you want really to to just give it a bit more weight. Um, and uh, another thing you can do is just sort of bend around the tips of the prongs so that they're not so scratchy. Um, uh, so very inexpensive. Uh, it's it's small, light enough that you could very easily just sit in your uh, in your rucksack. Uh, uh, just uh, um, uh, and you can bend these prongs to, to, together, uh, sort of while it's in the rucksack, so that it packs away uh, fairly fairly small, and it can just sit in your rucksack. And if you're up in the hills and suddenly find it. Uh, a, a lake, uh, you can get it out and, and, and throw it out. Um, uh, whereas some of the, those other ones I was showing before would be a, a heck of a weight to be carrying around the hills for, for days when you might not use them. Um, so uh, another very simple design, very cheap materials, um, uh, is just a piece of copper pipe and, and some fencing wire. Um, uh, or if you've got, if you've still got some wire coat hangers, they're actually even better uh, because, of course, fencing wire is designed for uh, tension, whereas the uh, sort of coat hangers are, are, are designed for resisting bending. Um, so the, the, the metal composition is probably better. Um, and what all you do with that is that you cut uh, lengths of uh, <coughs> uh, lengths of wire and feed them through the tube and bend them around at both ends. Uh, and again, it's a nice light. Uh, again, you can add weights to if you, if you want it to be a bit heavier, uh, but it's nice light. And because these, uh, these uh, prongs uh, are quite bendy, um, uh, that if you want to stick them in your rucksack, it'll, it'll sort of compact. Uh, away in, into sort of not take up the whole of the rucksack. Um, uh, in this design, uh, one of the things to, to, that's useful to do, uh, this is a, looks a, a bit of a dog's dinner, but actually it's designed to the sort of a complex knot to just hold the prongs uh, in position so that you have a, a 
a nice star at the end uh, rather than them all sort of be, sort of swiveling around and, and ending up all, all clumped together. Uh, so th that's the reason for this rather complicated knot. It's just sort of woven in and out uh, uh, in between the prongs to make sure that they stay uh, stay apart. Uh, and uh, uh, th this is the sort of working end, uh, but the, the, the wire sort of goes right through. So if you hold, hold them firm at this end, uh, that will hold them firm at this end too. Um, uh, the other thing about these these light ones, uh, these, these sort of bendable prong ones, is that if they get caught on something, uh, it's just a matter of pulling hard and they will eventually bend and you can retrieve it. Uh, some of these fixed, um, uh, fixed uh, prong things, uh, once they're caught on something, it can be a devil to un untangle them from rocks or shopping trolleys or whatever. Yeah. Uh, is been thrown into the into the water body. Um, uh, the third design is again a rather quite a simple uh, 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 thing. Uh, uh, it's essentially two rake heads uh, back to back to each other, uh, tied tied together with a bit of sort of uh, plastic coated garden uh, wire. Um, and uh, this is a much more robust thing, much heavier, he heavier duty. Uh, it's a bit more bulky, uh, but it does tend to be the design that's used most often when you're doing official surveys, um, because uh, I mean, in as much as grappling is, is an effective quantitative way, at least with this, you know that it has a fixed catch. So if that's say about 25 centimeters and you pull it uh, for four meters, then you'll know that you're sampling a square meter uh, in total. Um, now the, there's all sorts of if and buts of the inaccuracies of, uh, of grappling as an effective tool for uh, properly sampling, but that's one of the reasons why they tend to use this design for official surveys. Um, uh, whereas uh, the, the sort of movable prongs, they don't have the, the same catch. It depends how wide you've, you've made the, the prongs were sticking out as to uh, the, the sort of area that it's surveying. Oh, sorry, I need to... Um, um, so I, I've already covered these. That just sort of summarizes uh, the some of the advantages of the of the different types. Um, so as I say, the, the the flexible prong ones they're light. They pack away compactly. Uh, they're good for dis much more e easier to disentangle them from obstacles. They also tend to dig in better because of the prongs. They they tend to dig into uh, the the soil a bit more particularly if it's a soft soil, but, but uh, so things like the sort of litterella and uh, quillwort and, and things which are a bit more difficult to pick up, uh, there's more chance of them being pulled up. Uh, whereas the, the double rake things mm, tend to be rather less effective on, on these, these rosettes. They tend to bounce off stony substrates. Um, uh, so they're not uh, they're less effective from that point of view, but they are very effective in, in gathering together uh, a sort of a, a, good, a good sample of vegetation. Um, uh, in terms of ropes, uh, sort of what sort of length, I mean, what, what sort of weight of rope probably depends on how heavy the grappling is. There's no point on having a big heavy rope uh, a rope on a, on a li little egg whisk type uh, grap more. Um, so uh, you just want something a bit a bit smaller for those. Uh, but you do remember, I mean, the the constant issue with a grap more is uh, the the rope getting knotted and tangled, and you spend a lot of time trying to untangle the uh, so that you, you've got a, a 
an, a sort of unknotted line. Um, and the longer the rope, the more you're going to get into that problem. Uh, you will end up with an, a knot of uh, rope to untangle more or less every time you throw. Um, but uh, somewhere six to 10 meters of length is, is a good compromise because of course you, you want to have a reason like, to get as far out into the water. So it's a compromise of, uh, uh, between those two. Um, uh, one or two other sort of tips really. Um, I personally uh, like the sort of plastic coated washing line because I, uh, it doesn't tend to form such quite such tight knots and it's easier to untangle these knots uh, uh, if they're not sort of immediately going into a sort of really tight knot. Um, so I, I think uh, that that's a, an advantage. You can get uh, from boating accessory places, you can get rope that floats. Now the advantage of that is that if you've hauled it in, uh, if, if you're standing in the water and you've hauled in a, a, a massive vegetation, and you're looking through that, um, uh, and um, uh, and you've sort of dropped the grapnel in the process. Sometimes, if it, the water's a bit cloudy, it can be quite difficult to find the rope to sort of to retrieve the because it's just sunk to the bottom. Uh, so, floating rope is 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 quite a good idea if you can get hold of it. Um, even in a, if you're doing it from a boat, sometimes if you sort of uh, if you uh, it's, it's quite good to have a, a, a rope that floats and you can see where the grapnel is. Um, but yeah, they, they tend to use a, a sort of a, a smaller twine and, and sort of shorter lengths for, for a light grapnel like the sort of egg whisk type. Uh, and that's it really, but one important thing to remember is to hang on to the end of the rope. Otherwise, you will lose the whole lot. And I have lost a few in my time because I have forgotten the first principle of grappling is to hold on to the end. Okay.